G'day guys, my name is Wildcard and welcome back to my channel. It's Six Nations preview season. Wiles has announced the team. Let's take a look what's happening. So the Wiles squad, obviously, since last year, they have been plagued with injuries going into 2022. That looks like the big, big, big issue with the Wiles side at the moment. So with the selections, uh, the big one that is obviously everybody knows that's injured is Alan Wing Jones, your dad, uh, probably your granddad. And uh, yeah, so Alan Wing Jones still injured. And as a result, the Welsh team has to name a new captain. And this is something that, yeah, they named Dan Bigger. Dan Bigger is new captain of Wales with Adam Beard as the vice captain. This is something that I thought was a little bit surprising. I honestly thought Adam Beard should probably just be the captain because... Adam Beard being next to Alan Wynne Jones has obviously learned a lot of that skills from Alan Wynne Jones, rubbing a lot of that, you know, um, that, that captaincy leadership role from Alan Wynne Jones, you know, as the line out jumper and just working so closely with Alan Wynne Jones. I thought Adam Beard for sure would have been the captain. Dan Bigger also has this issue that he's a little bit, I don't know, what do you call it? I don't want to put it too harshly, but. I feel like the way he talks may not be, yeah, may not be the best. Like he's a little bit of a drama queen. So he may not be the best at getting on the good side of the referee. So I'm very surprised with Dan Bigger in the, as the captain. But I can, I do understand with the logic. Dan Bigger is probably the best player in Wales at the moment, like it or not. He, he's, uh, from what I've been reading that his current performance with his club, He's like quite uh, Northampton Saints. He's like apparently he's doing really well. He's like dominating other teams essentially. He's he is the currently the most capped player in the Wales team, and uh, I think even you know you can probably even make the argument that he's probably number one uh, fly half in the world at the moment. To be to be really really frank in terms of his consistency, Lions tour last year pretty stale performance. His kicking is impeccable. So just from a skill set point of view. He is extremely good, but he does do a lot of like niggling stuff on the field that may or may not get him on the good side of the referee. So that might be something that uh, pulls him back. We shall see. It's a decision that the coaches have made and uh, we'll have to see how he takes the team forward. And obviously due to the injuries where well, there's a lot of big names that's injured from the Wales team. Uh, Fela Tau is injured, a big name for the Wales backline. Josh Navidi, Justin Tipperick, Johnny Williams, George North, Lee Happeny, George North and Lee Happeny, probably two of the biggest names in the Welsh side that are, yeah, they're being injured. Oh, Ken Owens as well in the front row. And yeah, these are just huge, huge names that's injured for the Wales side. It's, it's a really, really tough for the Wales team. So Wales schedule going into Six Nations, they start off away in Ireland. Uh, literally the most difficult match of the of the year for them against Ireland away in, in Aviva Stadium. This is uh this is pretty much like the make or break for YLC. If they can pull up an upset, which is extremely difficult, they will be on a very very good. Uh, they will be yeah they will be it'll be, it'll be, it'll be yeah also that's like a very very long shot. And then also they've played England at Twickenham, another hugely difficult game. They do play France at home, but uh, at, at this point, if you already lost to Ireland and England, the you know the championship is pretty much out of reach at that point. So it's really, really difficult season for Wales, and uh, this and com you know that is all just exas exacerbated with the injuries. It's uh, it's not looking good. Now the let's a look at the some of the players selections for the Wales team. So first up in the four pack, the most 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 important the Wales forwards are the front rowers and they really really need to step up against wallabies to be like well, the wallabies don't have a good front row and they were up against the uh, eight i mean the wallabies have a good front row but not the best in the world right and against the seven man wallabies four pack the welsh the welsh forwards were struggling this was in november so only three four months away right from the kickoff of the six nations like what November, December, yeah, only three months away. So the props, the front rowers really need to step up. Wing Jones really need to step up. Um, Ryan Elias and 
uh, who is like a Thomas Francis. These three guys really, really need to step up, especially in the first match against Ireland, who has a very, very dominant four pack. This is probably the most important part of the Welsh forwards that really they need to work on if they want to have a chance of, you know, challenging for the Six Nations title. And also in the four pack, Adam Beard has been really, really solid for the Welsh team. He is. His lineup has been actually quite impressive, to be honest, against the Springboks when Alan Wynne Jones was injured. He was he stepped up and really got the lineouts under control. I, up against Ibn Isabeth, the best lineout um, operator in the world. Adam Beard was very impressive. So I will look forward for Adam Beard to, to really show, uh, to put up that impressive performance once again that the Welsh team really, really needs. This is kind of like a really difficult situation. There's a lot of weight on Adam Beard's shoulders. And yeah, and just to see how they go. So, and then also in, uh, yeah, just go have a look at some of these TK players. That's so, Win Jones, he, you know, prop, 183 centimeters tall, 118 kilograms, 38 test caps for Wales team. He plays at, I'm pretty sure he's loose head prop. And then Ryan Elias, the hooker, he's, it's going to be really important for him to work with Adam Beard in this, in the Six Nations to really like, uh, to really solidify everything. His line-out throws has been okay, but I think Adam Beard really covers him a lot with some of his like mistakes at times. 188 centimeters, 110 kilos, uh, plays 23 caps for Wales. And then we have Thomas Francis, uh, the tight head prop, really, really need to step up for the Six Nations this year. 120 kilos, 185 centimeters, 60 caps for, for Wales. His performance against Australia was like like a C minus, okay? Barely like I would say if I would say a fail, I would, be, I would say like a D, right? Like a D, D. It was not good. So Adam Beard, as we mentioned, two meters and three centimeters tall, 116 kilos. Probably the most important player in that Welsh four pack. Just gels everyone together. And then we have Ross Moriarty in the back row. Uh, also, and he's going to be really really critical in that breakdowns as well for the Welsh team. 188 centimeters, 103 kilograms, uh, 49 caps. And finally, in the Welsh four-pack, Aaron, uh, Aaron Wainwright, another really, really important piece of puzzle for the Welsh side, especially with the breakdowns, trying to get that penalty for Dan Bigger for a kick is really, 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 really important. So these are the key players in the four-pack. Hundred, Sorry, yeah. Uh, Aaron Win Wainwright, 188 centimeters, 105.9 kilograms. So these are kind of like the guys that really need to carry the Welsh team. They do have a few uncapped players in the mix, but these are the key players that kind of like the whole six nations hinged on in their four pack especially the front rowers that is uh very very critical in the back row in the back line welsh side also has a quite a lot of talent gareth davies coming in at 65 takes caps he's probably i i personally think that he's the best uh halfback in in wales by far but the the way that uh pivak likes to use him is off the bench i think that's just something that he kind of that, that's something that I think, what's his name? Um, uh, Gallon likes to use him on the bench as well. But when he comes off the bench as a finisher, he's very, very impressive. Against the Wallabies, he literally won the game for the Welsh team, making a huge break on the sideline. He's done that again and again and again for the Wales team, uh, especially against the Wallabies for some reason. So Gareth Davies, one of the better players, one of the best players in the Wales backline. And him coming off the bench as that finisher, is uh, very, very important as well. So he's 178 centimeters tall, uh, 88 kilograms in the scrum half position. Next up, we have in the, yeah, we'll have uh, Tom Williams, also in the scrum half position. Oh, actually, I don't need to talk about him. So next one, he's a reserve. So next one is the uh, number 10 position. Number 10, uh, the Wales team has three options in the number 10. I am very surprised, and this is another reason I thought it was a bit weird to have bigger at starting number 10. Because I do think that Gareth Anscombe, pretty sure Gareth Anscombe used to be the number one ten for Wales before he was injured, uh, before the, before he was injured just prior to the 2019 Rugby World Cup, and uh, he was he came back with his after two years off for a serious knee injury to play against New Zealand. Whilst his performance against New Zealand was not that great, I thought they probably would. He's definitely going to be coming off the bench, so I thought. Maybe at some games, yeah, I thought he could probably potentially get a start at some of these games, especially if, um, if like Six Nations out of reach. Gareth has the talent, has the uh, uh, the abilities, 
has experience, you know, Grand Slam champion number 10. I think he just needs some time to get back into the groove. So I'm surprised that the fact that the name Bigger at, as the captain means that Anscombe is going to be off the bench pretty much like all the time. And I felt like, you know, especially if you lose to, you know, let's say if you lose to, um, let's say if you lose to uh, uh, Ireland at the start, at, at, in the first game, there's no reason to keep running Bigger at 10. You can definitely get Gareth Anscombe against England, for instance, to give him some more experience to try to get back into that groove. Because overall, I do think Anscombe is probably a little bit better than Bigger. Um, but yeah, maybe the injury is still like, yeah, we, we shall see how he recovers from injury. I felt like he probably just needed me, me more time. Also, the third, uh, number 10 is, is it Jonathan Davies? No, wait. No, Davies. Um, what's his name? Is it Jonathan Davies? Uh, no, Reese Priestland is the third number 10 option. Um, I feel like he's probably not going to be able to get much game time over Gareth unless one of these guys gets injured. So, Gareth Anscombe. 183 centimeters, 86 kilograms. Uh, I, I really hope to see more time for him on the field. And then we have Dan Bigger, the captain himself. We should say that it's a really, really big challenge for him to handle the team, to handle the referee, to, you know, kind of like tone down that, you know, annoyingness. His, yeah, yeah, tone down his, you know, his act a little bit and see how he handles the referee. Really, really important for him. 188 centimeters, 90 kilograms uh, for Dan Bigger. Still, his kicking, quite impressive. One of the most solid performers in the number ten position, and Reese Priestland, the third option for the yeah for the for the Welsh team, old timer, old Lions tour guy. Um, hopefully, he might get some time off the bench. And then we have the next guy. We have uh, Cal Mashidi. So the back back line of the Welsh team is also uh, a little bit lacking due to the injuries, in my opinion. So Cal Mashidi comes in at thirteen caps, hundred seventy five centimeters. Uh, again, uh, he's, he's not a fly half. Actually, we don't have to talk about him again. Anyway, next one, um, Jonathan Davies. He is um, a very, very experienced Welsh player. 93 test caps. Is he actually more experienced and bigger? 95, no, just below. Uh, former Lions tour player. Really, really impressive center. Coming to the end of his, I guess, yeah, uh, his 185 centimeters, 101 kilograms. He is... Um, yeah, I don't know. He's incredibly good, incredibly experienced. Really need him to pull out big performances for Welsh team for this tournament. And then Nick Tom's Tompkins, the guy that got away with murder against Australia, the infamous slap down, knock on, no knock on, try time. Um, still very young player, 16 test caps for Wales, 180 centimeters, 85 kilograms. He needs to be more consistent. He he is. He does have that like flair in, in in him, so it's really interesting to see how he fares this year uh, in the Six Nations. But I think just need more time for him to get a little bit better. Uh, he, he just need more time, and he will mature, yeah, a bit better as well. So definitely has potential here with this game with this guy, uh, Josh Adams, Lions Tour winger. He was incredibly good in the Lions Tour against the club rugby, and then against the Springboks. He was mm, not so, uh, like, he wasn't looking as impressive. Obviously, the Springbok is a much tougher team. And I didn't think, as a result, I didn't think he'd be getting that much time in the Springbok. I think he might just come off the bench once or twice. And it didn't look that impressive. And then in the November Test Series, I'm pretty sure he had a bit of injury going into the November Test Series. So his performance was, once again, not that impressive against the Wallabies, against Fiji, uh, and then against the Springboks. Not that impressive. Um, so... Yeah, we shall see how he goes to the Six Nations. Uh, hopefully, he's able to get himself back. Maybe, yeah, maybe the injury had a bit of something to do with it. But um, Josh Adams needs a big, 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 big performance this year. Looking forward to see how he travel, has, how he's been traveling since the since November. It's uh, it's quite he's uh, another really, really important factor for Wales in their Six Nations chances. Uh, Johnny McNichol, a former Crusader guy, he kind of debuted earlier, just like last year, basically. And he was, he played fullback uh, because half penny is injured. Uh, once again, the way that the game is played nowadays, the fullback position is extremely important. The, this former Kiwi Crusader guy, he was actually really impressive. I, I thought he was going to have a tough time against the Springboks, but he wasn't. So 
very impressive. So we shall see how he goes this year in the Six Nations. This will be a very, very huge year for Johnny McNichols. And finally, everybody's favorite, favorite boy, uh, Luis Rees Zamet, the young guy on the wing, the speedster, the, the guy, probably the most promising talent in Wales at the moment, scored a very impressive try against Fiji to kind of like really have Wales pull ahead of Fiji, like really tipped over Wales towards that wing against Fiji last year. Uh, still a lot of learning to do for this guy. He was very impressive last year in the Six Nations. A lot of the games that Wales that squeezed that ahead to, 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 to win the Six Nations last year was because of this guy's uh, flair. He's really good at kicking, kicking chase. He's probably like his specialty. Uh, yeah, as a result of his kicking game, in fact, he helped, he basically, yeah, I will say, had a huge, huge, huge credit for helping Wales winning the Six Nations last year. Can he do it again this year? We have to wait and see. So, let me know your thoughts on Wales this year. I think it's going to be a really, really difficult year just being away against England and Ireland, two of the top teams in the in the, uh, in, in the Six Nations. Away, uh, yeah, away uh, in, the, in the Lions' den, right away at Aviva Stadium. Could just be the, uh, the, 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 the championship could just be over on the first week. But we'll have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts. What? The date is wrong here. What? That has to be February 5th. That's not, not, that's, that's a typo. And it has to be a typo, yeah. This is Wales, uh, Wales Rugby Union official website. There is a typo in the date. So it's, I'm pretty sure that's not in, in May. I'm pretty sure it's in February, but yeah, it's February 5th, not May. Uh, typo for the Wales Rugby Union to fix. And uh, thank you for watching, guys. And uh, I'll see you guys. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you guys uh, later. Cheers.